Hello, hello everyone. Cindy Drozda here, and I assume my audio is good. Uh, if you can't hear me, please let me know. Of course, if you can't hear me, you didn't hear that. Uh, so great to be here, and we've got a whole bunch of our woodturning friends here. If I miss you, uh, miss saying hello to you, it's because there are so many people. Mike, great to see you, and Lowell, oh, and, and Philip from the UK, and I think I saw Paul Howard from the UK, and oh, and Ian is here from the UK. Oh, we got a good cross the pond contingent today, and uh, and thank you, Anita, uh, for the audio check. Uh, yeah, really good to see all of you here. Uh, and go ahead and post in the comments where you're from and and what the weather's like today. We have a beautiful sunny day here in Colorado. And anyway, I am here today with my friend Carl Jacobson. And um, here is Carl. We're going to have Carl show us some stuff today. Go ahead and say hi, Carl. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me well, too. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. If you didn't hear Carl, uh, say something, please. Yeah. So, so yeah, <laughs> um, we, are, uh, we are struggling with the technology. There we go. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have Carl do some some demos of his his off-center jig and we're gonna let carl mostly talk about it but if you've got a question for carl or for me uh about anything to do with wood turning but it, particularly if you want to see stuff about his jig uh please ask in the comments whatever platform you're on oh yes well um larry i'm really happy i'm not in florida it may be hot but at least it's not humid here uh, <laughs> and we'll we'll put all your comments up there and Ah, yes. Uh, Southwest New Mexico, a place I love. Um, yeah. And I used to live in Kansas. And, and yes, it is hot and humid in the summer. I was a kid there. Um, no. All right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to give a start here to just uh, sh tell you about a couple of upcoming things in wood turning. Uh, here's my place today. Hot, sunny summer is here, but we've been getting rain. So it's all green. I love it. Um, I do these sessions. This is a live stream, as you know. I do these kind of sessions every month. On It's on a Thursday at noon Mountain Time or 1800 UTC, 2 p.m. Eastern. And the next one's August 31st. Um, in the meantime, every other Thursday, I do a live Zoom meeting that's free. It's a sharing and Q&A session. So the way you get to be a part of these sessions is you can click this if you're capable of clicking a QR code right now. Um, you, the way you get to these sessions is to sign up on my website. And uh, yeah, there, there's that. But um, what am I looking for? My website is very easy to find, cindydrozda.com. Uh, so if you can spell my name, you can usually find me online. Um, and uh, I'm I'm going to be doing that two weeks from today, this, the online Zoom meeting sharing session. So you can see me every other Thursday doing something. And you can see my friend Todd Rains every other Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central, which is 1.30 p.m. or uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern and 19.30 UTC. Uh, and he does uh, various programs. Um, he had a guest on last week that was really interesting, uh, Neil Brand. Uh, so you can see either me or Todd every week toward the end of the week. And, uh, and that's all, all good fun. I like to see this community uh, carrying on. It's really great stuff. Uh, both Todd and I and the rest of the Vendor Showcase people, except for Steve, and a lot of other people are going to be at SWAT. Uh, that's the Southwest Association of Turners. 
And here is where it is. It's the 25th through 27th in Waco, Texas. And I don't have a link for it here for you uh, because it's hard for me to post stuff like links in my video studio. Uh, but go online and, and search for SWAT Symposium. And I hope to see you there. This is going to be, by the way, I'm doing demos. I'm a lead demonstrator at SWAT this year, 31st anniversary. Uh, although that logo is, is last year's. Um, it's probably the last time you're going to see me do in-person demos for the foreseeable future. So if you like in-person demos, uh, absolutely come to that one. And, and a few weeks after that, in September 15th through 17th in Loveland, Colorado, is our local wood turning symposium, Rocky Mountain wood turning. I'll be there as a vendor. I'll be there to chat with you. I'm not doing any demos, but um, come and have a good time. It's a small symposium, lots of fun, really a lot of fun. Uh, the camaraderie of a small symposium is great. We have a good uh, demonstrator lineup, as you can see from there. And uh, we have a really good trade show floor. So yeah, come and you'll see Todd Rains of Wood Turning Tool Store. He'll be there. And by the way, if you want to sign up for Todd's live streams or find out where he's going to be next, woodturningtoolstore.com. And we are going to go right to Carl Jacobson. Let's get Carl on the solo. Here he is. Hey. Hi, Carl. <laughs> Hello. Yes, we will be at SWAT too. So look forward to seeing you again. And yeah, it's okay. uh, it's it's a great symposium. So yeah, we always always look forward to that one. Yeah, if you if you haven't been, go check it out because it's it's uh, definitely one one to go to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you said you were going to do a demo for us. Let's find out first yes. if there are any comments, questions for you. Yeah. Um. Oh, thank you, Lance, for the uh, the link to SWAT, SWATTurners.org. Oh, nice. Yeah, very good. And uh, it looks like Larry's already thinking about that off-center jig. So this is what Carl's going to show us today. Um, and, yeah, I do have a link to Carl's website here. And where is that? Is this it? Uh, well, yeah, here it is. NilesBottleStoppers.com. Pretty easy to find, Carl, also. Oh, and before I get too far along here, uh, we are having a giveaway today. Yeah. yeah. Yay. We always love that. Yeah. It's a raffle. And what we're giving away is... Um, I'm going to throw up here some pictures of it, if I can. Yeah, uh, it's called a Pizza Night Special. And the Pizza Night Special is, well, why don't you tell us about it, Carl? I don't want to do all the talking today. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, so we're giving away a pizza cutter and a bottle opener. So, yeah, just, we'll give away the kits so you can make a pizza cutter and then a bottle opener as well. And, and I, I believe we, we have it set up to, uh, if you, I think it's hashtag pizza night or pizza night special. What is it? Pizza night. In it's the... hashtag pizza night. Yep. And what you're going to win if you type hashtag pizza night in the comments is the kit to make this bottle or this uh, pizza cutter and the, the um, kit looks like these parts and you make your own wood handle that's what yeah. carl's yeah. company sells is the kits to make things where you turn the handle like these are bottle openers and this is a unique style of bottle opener uh yeah. you turn the handles and and they supply the hardware so you're going to get hardware to make a bottle opener and a pizza cutter and hope you invite us over for pizza when you get them all done <laughs> uh yeah so so well uh yeah, we'll do that. We'll see about that. 
All right, right, so here we go. Hashtag pizza night. That is exactly right. No spaces, no capitalizing, none of that stuff. And we'll do the drawing toward the end of the hour. And you don't have to be present to win, but if you're not here and uh, I don't know you, we have no way to find out where to send it. So... Get your hashtag pizza night in there, and um, we're going to turn it over to Carl here now. All right. Are we ready? Oh, we are <laughs> ready for you, Carl. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, we get a lot of questions about the, the joiner off-center jig. So I've done some videos on YouTube on it, but I just kind of wanted to go through the whole thing and I can explain all the parts that come with it and then different things you can do. And we're going to make a little inlay piece for a lidded box. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. I will stop and explain anything. So yeah, just, uh, just go ahead and we'll, and we'll work through all this. Let me show you, get the camera switched over and I'll show you all the parts first and then we'll, and then I can show you what what it will do all right so the jig is for making small small things like uh bottle stoppers pendants earrings and here is what comes with it this is the 10 hole plate so this is the indexing plate i'm sorry the 10 hole 10 hole plate and this is the indexing plate right here so these actually go together and these bolts that come with it, I'll show you what all of those do. But these two plates bolt together like that with these, these after you get it on your mandrel. It also comes with three buttons. So these buttons are for doing things like if you wanted to do a pendant and a matching set of earrings, you can do that with them. We have a three quarter inch inch and a quarter and a two inch and that way if you wanted to do two inch pendants you can just duplicate them all to two inch and just just keep doing them and what's nice about it is you just put them in the same holes let's say you want to do six four and you know eight it'll just keep duplicating that pattern so all these little parts here i'll show you how it, those all go together in a second but let me show you some of the things that i have here for display so as far as bottle stoppers, it, you can put your thread your bottle stopper straight onto the jig, do little ducks, swans, off-center pieces like that, and then the, it goes right back onto your bottle stopper. You can do lidded boxes, small little lidded boxes. Have uh, some pendants here that were made with the off off-center jig. So here is another one where. I turned the the just trued it up and then countersink a little honeycomb. Mm, some, that was some of, great. Some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Turned a little button and and put it right inside of it. It will also do super intricate patterns. Like, Shall we uh, show the gallery? Yeah, yeah. Let's show the gallery page because there's that. some really neat ideas on there. Okay, so here's this at the top there is that one you're showing us. Yes, it's very, pattern. very similar to that. Yep. How does a person figure that out? So on the website, if you click on the Joiner Jig page and scroll down just above the video, there are highlighted in teal links. There's... Um, there's four of them. One of them is basic setup for the pendants, basic setup for for um, bottle stoppers. The very bottom one is an Excel spreadsheet where you can go in there, you can go in the house, figure it out all out on the computer and come out and just put it in the exact holes that you just designed. So you can design any wow. pattern in the house and come out and if you want to just cool. make those pendants all day long, it, those same positions on the jig. Now, I love this box with the multiple inlays overlapping and, and outlined. That looks like a lot of uh, pieces fit together, but that jig will make it easy to duplicate too, won't it? It, it will. It, yeah, it just yeah. lines everything right back up in the same position. So it's it's nice mm -hmm. to, for duplicating stuff. Yeah, the pendants are cool, but any of those pendants, they could be the, the inlay in the top of a box also. Yes. Yes. So that's what, that's what we're going to do today. So... Yeah. Even like, uh, 
Really? Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an inlay for, let's, for this little lid on the box. Let's and, get you here front and center. All right. Uh, yeah, there you yeah. are. So you're so big just, on the screen now. Yeah. So I just recessed. Any questions little... for Carl? Just uh, type them in the chat and I'll get them. Yeah. Oh, here's a question for you, Carl. Yeah. Uh, what finish was on the more complicated design? I think he's talking about that that one in the gallery, probably where oh, it's one... got. Uh, let's see. We'll we'll bring that up bring there that again. Up. And I'm not sure what finish he put on it. He didn't. He didn't mention what finish it was when he sent the picture. It looks like the the jig allowed you to cut the pattern and then he filled it with something yeah i think he he inlaid like this one right here it, it just cut this was actually done on a rose engine and i got this at the aw show i went over and traded him for it because I, I i like having a little display piece and so uh -huh. this is just cut but uh -huh. you could fill that in you with could epoxy put, you or, could yeah or yeah. uh or Mother of Pearl powder. Of I love Pearl. that. Yep. Ah, so here's the million dollar question, Carl. Will you have the jigs for sale at SWAT? I'll Ab bet you will. Absolutely. We will have them at SWAT. And yeah, look forward, look, really looking forward to it. It's it's a great symposium. But we will have everything there at SWAT. So yeah, it's great. It's uh it kind of looks a little complicated, you know, with all the little pieces and everything, but it's, it's really not. Um, so let oh, me... and here's another question. Sorry, Carl, to, for yep. interrupting again. Uh, can you buy them in the UK? Yes, we ship worldwide. So we ship to the UK quite a bit, Australia, Germany. Yeah. All, all over the world. Yep. Cool. All right. So sorry about that. Carry on, well, please. That's our, all good. All right. So, so I have some stuff here set up. So these ones right here are the one are mine. These are the ones I use. So this is like the two inch button. So you just use double sided tape. That's a piece of quarter inch plywood and you stick that on there, true it up. And that way, when you're, when you're turning your, your work piece, you don't cut into the buttons. It's just a sacrificial piece. You can see on, on some of the spots like, like this pendant right here was lined up right there. And that's where I cut into it. And oh, know, look, it, look who's on Robin Jacobson. Yay, Robin. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. <laughs> oh, and this right here is the indexing plate. So the these four little wood screws right there are those wood screws. This large bolt right here is what runs right through. And these are all countersink down in there. And this is just a waste block that I put on there. So when you're doing, doing bottle stoppers, your bottle stopper blank threads right onto there, just like that. And then you, you turn. Hey, Larry just ordered one. Uh, so did I. It's going to be here soon. I can't wait to try this. But yeah, they're, they're, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, I have a couple of videos too on, on turn. In fact, I think it was actually turning this particular one. So they're pretty easy to do. Oh. And so this right here, let me get the, get the chuck off of here real quick and we'll get the mandrel on. And I want, Oh, one thing I did forget was the fact that it comes with the mandrel. And so if you have a bottle stopper mandrel, it, it looks really similar to this. The only difference is the bottle stopper mandrels have a flute cut in them so that you can thread on your, your uh, blank if you want to. So these ones don't have a flute in it. We have inch and a quarter, one by eight, and then a Morris taper, one, two. So whatever ever lathe you have. And we, um, we don't want that flute, right? Because it's going to cut your jig. Yes. So the, the jig is aluminum and that's why we don't have the flute on it. There's no chance of cross threading it is yeah. you don't want to cross thread the aluminum. So this is the 10 hole plate. You put that on like that. Just like so. As far as the buttons go, they'll go into any one of the 10 holes on the front of it. They thread right in just like that. And you can use any one of those 10 holes and then you can also take the jig and move it on the back side 
to any one of the 10 holes to create wow. a pattern. So it My really mind is full already with all of that. It just gives you a ton of options for doing, you know, just just some neat patterns and different things. So with the pendants, you can also let me let me screw this real quick. You can also use the indexing plate. I have mine set up for for just doing the bottle stoppers, but you can also you you don't have to put that bolt in. You could just use a waste block like this, make it any diameter you you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to do three inch pendants, you could just flatten that off, make it three inch little waste block, and just double side tape this right to it. And then you have any one of those ten holes. But this the indexing plate also has twenty six holes, so you can move it to any one of those twenty six positions on each of these holes. So let me show you real quick how that goes on that i have a question for you here carl yeah um uh, and and i just put the niles bottle stoppers website in the chat so you should get that all right so dr bob wants to know does your original system that you got years ago have interchangeable parts with today's product yes so we get we get that bob we get that a lot Everything is the same. The butt, if you have the eight, the original eight hole plate, everything is still the same. It's all three, eight, 16. Everything will still work together. So the you can buy more buttons or another indexing plate if you want to. Yes. Yep. Uh, and it all thread right into it. it. The only difference is there are two extra holes in this plate. Everything else is the same and the buttons will thread right into it. Yeah. Good, good cool. question. I forgot to forgot to mention that so yeah it's um so oh one thing i didn't mention so when you're when you're doing your pendants for the first time okay show that real quick yeah don't forget yeah. to uh get your hashtag pizza night comment in there and you can only enter once so even if you try to type it in 15 times it, it'll still select you only once but <laughs> hashtag pizza night and win a uh pizza night special kit from niles bottle stoppers a pizza cutter and a bottle opener yeah we'll yeah. be doing that um, in about half an hour right get it in there so the two washers the only thing they're for is you put them on there put your plate on is for when you're truing up the pendant. So when you first put your pendant on there, you double side your workpiece, you need to get it, get it trued up and it's for putting it in the center hole. So the stud goes in too far without those washers and the button yeah. won't screw down all the way. So that's, yeah. That's so what. I have a question. Any yeah. reason not to just put it on with the washers anytime? Um, it, you can leave they them on. give you a disadvantage. So, it, they probably don't. I just feel more comfortable with it after I get it trued up. I take them off so that it threads it all the way in instead of like halfway. And that way it has it's grabbing onto more threads mm -hmm. and, and it runs all the way down. That's that's the only thing, you know, with the washers on there, it's only threading in about that far. And then you'd start right. doing some off center turning. Oh. I, I get a little worried about it because it is, it is oh. aluminum. So I'd rather have it yeah. thread all the way down. But have yeah. you ever had one of these fail? Um, no, I I haven't. Um, we've had a couple couple people like cross thread them, but um, nothing nothing come apart or anything like that. The only thing I will mention too, let me get this on and I'll show you. So the indexing plate goes right on onto this. So these bolts right here and that as far as what cindy just said these are thumb screw and i just put them all in loose to start out with excuse me for a second uh yeah. thomas you might want to make hashtag pizza night the only thing in your comment i have no idea whether if you put something else in there if it picks up on it so uh, you might enter again just to be absolutely sure and uh, Mikey's got a question here, which is a really good one. I know you were probably yeah. going to go for go for this already, but uh, the limitations of the jig. What do you recommend as far as the largest or heaviest 
diameter, weight, length that that is safe with this jig? Yeah, I, so I wouldn't try and put a 12 inch goblet on it. Um, so what we kind of recommend is about about five inches around. Um, I wouldn't go much bigger than that. It, you could do a small lidded box on it. Um, I wouldn't, you know, don't try and put a bowl blank or anything on it. Um, right. So it's for, for smaller stuff like the bottle stoppers, um, uh, bottle opener handles, pendants, inlay pieces like that. I wouldn't go, you know. So you're saying, you're saying maybe you might do five inches, but you yeah. know, and, the, and another part of Mikey's question is max RPM. And I'm going to just, I haven't used this jig yet, but I've done offset turning. And yep. my feeling is if I turn it on and I'm scared, I'm either going too fast or the piece is too big. You yep. know, if you turn on yep. and, and, you, and your lathe is walking across the floor, mellow yep. it out a little bit, right? <laughs> Right, right. And so I normally with off center turning, I mean, I turn the speed up too, because it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. you know, if you, if you're running at a low speed, I'm just going to say like 500 RPMs, it's kind of going kunk, 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 cutting it. So I usually run, especially doing the pendants and stuff, probably at least 2000. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It you get a cleaner cut and it acts more like a solid piece of wood instead of yep. all that spinning air too. Yep. Uh, yep. So yep. you know, but then of course if you go up to two thousand RPM and it's it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back off. You might be trying to do too much. So you, you know yep. the the guidelines are be safe and use your own judgment. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Some people aren't comfortable turn in at high speed no matter what so it's yeah use your right. own judgment and, yeah. and i'll have mushrooms and olives and extra cheese <laughs> <laughs> roy is going for sausage and black <laughs> olives and extra sauce <laughs> oh um here's another question while we're interrupting you uh is there a preference for what kind of double side tape you use um, and, and I had that question too, and I I want to get more specific. Some double sided tape is foam, and some of it is more like masking tape, and some of it is like mylar film. Um, what what do you have to say about choosing double sided tape? So I use the thin stuff, not not like a foam where it's going to flex at all. It's thin. This is it. Uh, it's a pressure sensitive tape. It it is more like just a masking tape. So and it's both okay. sides. Um so you don't want a, something that's squishy and not going to be a firm attachment. Yeah. yeah. You want the least amount of tape in there as possible. So this is this is the brand I have. It seems to work really well. So I've just kind of stuck with it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Spec yeah. tape. I have yeah. some of that. It's been highly recommended by Alan Zenreich. And so, uh, of course, he probably knows. Uh, here's another yeah. question for you, Carl. Will yeah. there be a special price for the jig at SWAT? Or uh, do you have any other specials you want to talk about at SWAT? Uh, so everything is at the show price at the at the show. So I'm not exactly sure on everything. But, yes, there will be a special price for the jig at the show. Yes. But not just the jig. You'll have other every, stuff. Every, yeah, all the all every all of our products, and stoppers and openers and everything. There'll be a show. Canadian price. bacon and pineapple, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine until somebody says anchovies, and then I'm out. Okay. Well, um, it, Greg would like to see you do some turning. So you got okay. something you can maybe you know put a chisel to yeah. that and make yeah. that box lid. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and work on that. So these things are thumb tight. So. You just screw them on and tighten everything down. So, and if you're uncomfortable with it, you can always pop these little caps off and use an Allen Allen screw because they're just Allen bolts that we we press those little caps on. So you can take them off if you're not comfortable with it. All right, so let's get a button on here and turn it down. All right. Get rid of that stuff. Don't need that. So we're going to put the... Ah, another question here on double-sided tape. Carry on, though. Um, the, 
the technique of putting two layers, of, putting a layer of blue tape on each side and CA gluing the blue tape together. Does that work here? Any potential um, issues? I have no idea. I've never tried that. So maybe, um, but is there anybody out in the chat who has used that? Or Cindy, have you ever done that? I haven't. I only recently actually found out about it. And it sounds like a cool technique, but I guess I'd be seriously wondering uh, when it might not be enough hold, you know? Yeah. So I, I'll try it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it might work. Yet. Might work fantastic. I just, I don't know. All right. So I went ahead and put those, uh, those two washers on. And this is my two inch button right there. So I can thread that right into the All right. Center. So here's another couple of questions for you. All right. Um, blue tape. Can you use the jig to create multi center pepperoni slices? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, that's not uh, serious. <laughs> Sure, why not? <laughs> and Gerald suggesting carpet tape. Yeah, well, carpet tape is a thin, non-squishy, good contact, double-sided tape. I've used it before, too. Nice, nice. So, yeah, another yeah. option. All right. So, let me switch cameras here for a sec. So, I just screwed the button on. It's in this in the center right there. So, this piece right here, I just grabbed it out of my scrap pile. It was there's the tenon on it for from something else I was making. Just a thin little piece, can't do much with it, but you can make pendant or what we're going to do is make a, a little inlay for this box. It's a little big, but well, we will turn it down. I'm really excited about the box inlay part of things here. Yeah. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, it is. It's super quick and easy, and you can duplicate the size on it. So that is actually really mm -hmm. nice. All right, so I'm going to bring it up, lock down the tailstock, put some pressure on it. Now, it's it, the tape is pressure sensitive, so you want to get some little bit of pressure on it. And then we'll go ahead and turn the diameter down on this. Because it's way too big. And we'll, we'll move it around a little bit in the jig and go ahead and do some off center cuts on it. So I'm going to use a spindle gouge here to get it, get it trued up. Oh, Joaquin is in a predicament now. He turned some pendants with his jig last month, and now he has to make Christmas presents for all the girls in the family. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. I love it. Uh, yeah. Okay, and here's another uh, little bit of housekeeping. Yes, this will be replayable. Look at the whatever platform you're watching on right now. And if it's Carl's YouTube or my YouTube or StreamYard, Facebook, LinkedIn, there will be a recording on those platforms that you can come back to later. Yeah, I, be I believe. So this is Cindy. I I know a bunch of people use StreamYard, but I've never actually like, I guess, been this, this part of it. So I... Mm -hmm. It's all it's playing live on YouTube right now, and I that I wasn't sure whether it just stayed up there like doing yeah. a YouTube live, but yeah. Unless is... you take it down, it's gonna automatically stay up there. Right. And if you're yeah. watching on the StreamYard platform because you're on my mailing list and you got the link, and this is what you can do is you can you can sign up for my you can subscribe to my list and then I send you this direct link to join on the StreamYard platform without having to go chase it down on YouTube or whatever. And it stays up there too. Yeah, that is, that's super nice. So the, the blank right now is centered. In other words, you have the jig and the index. Are you using the indexing plate? No, you just are no. using the button. Just, yeah, just the two inch button. Okay. And it's so, in the center hole at the yeah. moment. 
it's in the center hole. So we just want to get it sized up to do this little inlay piece. So gonna Jerry, go answer and... to your question is yes, there will be a discount at SWAT on this jig. So come yeah. to SWAT, everyone. Yes. Yeah. SWAT is we we have been going there for years. I can't remember how long, but even way before not we got Niles, we would go there and do demonstrations and help out with vendor booths and uh, it is fantastic. Yeah, SWAT's right. a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a it's a family. You see the same people there every year and a lot of people go to every symposium, but a lot of the SWAT people are just SWAT goers and and there's yeah. there's nightlife, there's uh they feed you every day on site. The hotel is just you don't even have to go outside in the Texas heat to get to your hotel room if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, it it it's a great it's not it's really nice because it's the same location every year or two. Yes. So it's, you always know where everything at. Exactly. Yeah, we get to know we get to know the town and everything. So you're sizing yeah. something here right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sizing the the recess right there, so that it will pop right inside of there. Oh, and and the best part is that Robin will be there. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, you get to talk to Robin in person. Uh, and so, Carl, have you been doing a lot of traveling with the mobile shop? No, so we haven't done any traveling uh, with the mobile shop since, uh, what was it, 2020, I believe, is our, when we had our last one. We did a show in, in, uh, in uh, Arizona. So with, with Niles, we can't shut the website down and just leave for, you know, yeah. three, week, three weeks and take off, take off in the in the mobile mobile shop we would love to but it's just something you know you you know well, now that carl has a real job he can't do stuff like that anymore <laughs> we, we can't uh, just travel around and on vacation all the time right and so here's a here's a link to that that uh, joiner offset jig kit that has everything yeah. Carl's showing you here today, the mandrel and the screws and the two plates and all that stuff. That's what I ordered. I thought it would be here today, but. Uh, it Oh, it didn't make it yesterday? No, no, no. Oh. But, well, maybe today then. No, Mike wants you to do a mobile shop up in the Pacific Northwest Mountains. Well, that sounds exciting and, that and would interesting. Be fun. We did one. Up at Mount St. Helens Whoa. Uh, a while ago. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and we... by the way, folks, the AAW Symposium is going to be in Carl's backyard next year, Carl and Robbins. So, yeah, um, yeah if you want to see these guys, come to the AAW next year. One of yeah. those rare occasions it's actually on the West Coast. It's only about 30 miles away, so we're looking forward to oh, that. Oh, <laughs> okay, Carl. Here's another question for you. Why don't yeah. you have an M33 threaded mandrel for one way? Uh, well, the answer is we do have an M33 mandrel. Oh, not, okay. Not, okay. That was, as far as the jig goes, we don't. We, we have an M33 mandrel for bottle stoppers, and it has the flute cut in it. But if you want the jig and the the M33 mandrel, you can just you can still use it. It's still uh hang on a sec. So just leave it in the notes when you order it and we will send you the M33. So oh it, so you can order one, but you have to special order it basically. Yeah, because we didn't want to okay. give it give it as an option without explaining to it to everybody. So okay. the M33 mandrel has the flute cut in it for bottle stoppers, but it still just take your you know take your time, thread it on. But it if somebody goes, who has a one way wants to order the mandrel with the M33 and no flute cut, 
We don't have that. We don't we have can't a withdrawal supply period. that. Oh, I thought you just said you could special order that. Well, we they can use the M33 with the flute cut in it. They just need to, oh, you know, okay. just be careful be and not, careful. not, yeah, not right. get carried away. And and yeah, uh, you're right, David. It's not just one way, but most European lathes. And then there's a there's another standard that's M30, and I think that's a lot of uh, Australian lathes and some European ones. So okay. you might, uh, well, you know, if you get enough requests, Carl's a businessman. If you request it enough times, he'll add it to his product line. Right. We all we already make the M33, so we could just have a have them made without the flute. We just don't get a lot of requests for it. A lot of people that buy the jigs in England, they just get the Morris Taper one, and it it doesn't have the flute in it. So, so. you can use a Morse Taper mandrel. Yes. Except yep. now, wait. Oh, but you'd have to have a draw bar. Yeah. Yeah, and we and we supply yeah. the drawbar and everything. Right, so that's yep. a perfectly safe way to do it, and then you can put it on any lathe. Yep, yep, yeah, and and a lot of people who do demonstration stuff, they get the Morris mm -hmm. Tape one because they never know what club they're what going thread, to or yeah. or to you know exactly they just get right. that one, and then they always always have the right mandrel. And and Brian, Byron's way ahead of us; he's already done that. So yeah, great solution. All right, so Ian, you can actually get what you need. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just the yeah. uh, just if you if you're okay with the M33 with the flute cut in it, just put a note in there. If you're not okay with it, just get the Morris Taper one, and and we we'll, we send the draw bar and everything with it. Sounds great. All right, so I'm just kind of bringing this down a little bit, and I kind of want to flatten it off. So that we can do so it's not bubbled up so here's a little lidded box i did not too long ago with an inlay piece in it just like that so we're basically going to do the same thing we're just going to cut some off center off center grooves right in the top of it so with this too if you, if you do want to dome the piece to con to dome it up like this one is you can still do it you can still cut the cut the grooves in it it unless you go too you know really deep it'll just cut the grooves on like the very top part of it so that might be you know a really cool design that's just cutting in in you know like a, a one inch circle on top depending on how how much you dome it mm -hmm. oh here's a, a little bit of information about the size that's possible with this jig, Dr. Bob has used it to make 12 inch award plates. Really? Um, and he uses a counterbalance. Oh, okay. So, there we go. Um, well, there's an extreme. Uh, but I think, I think that basic bottom line of if it's scary, you're pushing it too hard. Yeah. Either yeah. the noise it makes or the, the lathe wa walking across the floor or, uh, you know, and stand out of the firing line, too, when you first turn it on. Yes, absolutely. All right. Turn it down just a little, just a hair more. How are, are we you doing trying to time? fit this? Uh, we have 15 minutes left, and we're going to do our drawing in a few minutes here. Um, maybe in 10 minutes. We'll wait till five minutes till the top of the hour. So... All right. So how are you doing there? I'm doing good. We're a couple more cuts here and we'll we'll get this thing off center. Yeah, I want to see it go off center and make a make a design off center. There we go. And let me bring down the center just a little bit. So in that that double-sided tape on there is, is holding it on there just fine. Can you zoom in at all with that, Carl? Can I, pardon me? Can you zoom in so we can, when you get to doing the off-center, and we can see it up close? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get this thing a little bit closer. Okay, let me... 
figure this out. Hang on. Give me one sec. Yeah. And so meanwhile, meanwhile, meanwhile <laughs> we're going to do our drawing pretty soon. So type your hashtag pizza night in the comments. And what you're going to win is a uh, pizza night kit from Niles Bottle Stoppers. We've got a, uh, a bottle opener and a pizza cutter. And you got to invite us over for pizza, of course. All right. So, have it all screwed up. The size is, is right on it. So, now you want to take this off. So, there's going to be our little pendant. I pull the washers out, like I said, just for safety. And let's go ahead and move this over into, I put it on the wrong way. Let's go ahead and put it on, uh, let's do four and eight. See what that okay. does. So this four is, and eight. Those holes are numbered, guys. So if numbered. you have something you want to duplicate, you just write down that you used four and eight or three and six or whatever. Yeah. So when I, I was talking to Ruth about it, she, she makes these and sells them. And she said, I found five or six patterns that I really like. So on the wall behind her lathe, she just wrote down four and six and seven and uh -huh. three or whatever it is. Just write them down. If you come out and need to make some more of a certain style, you just put it right on, on those numbers and you're ready to go. So, so here's a, here's a good trick right here, folks. Yeah. So before you even turn the lathe on, you can actually just put a pencil line on it that is exactly where it's going to cut. If you wanted to move, you know, it down, down further down there, or if you wanted to do something else, even, you know, like a, a smaller, smaller one way up here, just put the pencil line on it. And once you find, find the line you like, I like that one. I'm just going to kind of darken it up a little bit. And then you turn the lathe on and you see exactly where you need to cut. Ooh, it's, yeah. It's right there. So honestly, you make that cut. Yeah, and you just just keep moving around, doing whatever pattern it is, but pencil it out first. You might might have wanted this lower or higher, or, you know. You can did you know figure it out before you even cut into the wood. So. Uh, for pizza night, uh, for the pizza night raffle, uh, type just pizza night hashtag pizza night without other words in the comment, just in case the the raffle thing doesn't catch it with other words. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it whether it yeah, does I don't or know not. Either. Whether it has to okay, be. so he's gonna he's gonna make a cut. Uh, this is exciting. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the tip of a skew. skew. I have about 2,200 RPMs right up there. And y'all caught that 2,200 RPM. He's not just going slow here. The faster you spin, the cleaner a cut like that will be. Yeah, and it it's. It's the faster it's going, like you said earlier, the more it's like solid wood. So it just Ooh, cut right cool. down in there. And so that's, I, you can actually turn it around and do the other side of the skew if you want. I just cut it in on with the one side. But if you wanted to come in here and open that up a little bit, you can do that, that too. A lot of times I have this fine detailer. So it is. Oh, yeah. Little that's point. a carbide pointed pointed yeah. carbide it's going to cut on both sides of the groove maybe That's a little right. cleaner than the skew but so whatever a pyramid tools another thing you could use for that yeah yeah that would be perfect and it, it depends on like the design you're looking for too if you want them that design where it's cut on both sides yeah the pyramid tool would mm -hmm. be would be great so too. tools to use here liz is wanting to know about that um the point of a skew uh yep. a diamond pointed scraper Yep. Maybe a carbide one, a yep. pyramid tool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and you, I mean, you can use, you know, I mean, a small spindle gouge too to do things. You like could. Some yeah. Of those, you could. Some, yeah. Some of those pictures you saw on, on the website, Um, even like the ones with the inlay where they were just circles. Um, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure he probably just did that with a parting tool. Something. Well, that's what I would do is do it with yeah. a parting tool. If I was going to make a cylindrical recess, like for instance, what I'm thinking is either cast some resin in it or 
perhaps uh, make a piece of wood to fit in it. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So that was the first cut. Now you're going to put it in a different hole. Yeah. Now we're going to move it over. And what did I say that was? Four, right? You said four and eight. All right. Now we're going to move it over to eight. Oh, okay. So Gerald is using a hunter number one. Uh, that's a, a six millimeter round cup carbide cutter. Okay. And he had excellent results with that. So cool. Yeah. It'll be a different shape slot than what you would get with the uh, skew. Oh, yeah. uh, have you tried using an elf tool or a texturing tool with this? Uh, no, I no, I haven't. But I actually have a texturing tool. That is a great idea. Yeah, I let's see what I... we'll do one and show us. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's let's actually try that. Hang on. I've never done it. I just have this, the big one on there. I don't know. Why not? Why not do it live, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> We're experimenting here. Right? I'm going to learn right. something, too, about that tool. I have one also, but I haven't right. done much with it. All right, let's see. I'm just going to draw a line on it to see where it's kind of going to go. It's kind of Now, this a is a different hole. Yeah, so this is this is eight. So okay, the first one was in four, and the next one is in eight. Yeah, so it's going to create that okay. little, you know, like an eyeball yeah. shape. So <clears throat> if you moved it to, I'm going to say like, uh, what would it be, so, something in between, it would cut right across there. Okay. And so, but and we, we did eight, so we're going to do like an eyeball. And okay. I, I guess we're making eyebrows right now. Yay. I love <laughs> this. All right. Let's try it. This is live experimentation, folks. It could catch and run and be horrible, <laughs> or it could be genius. Uh, I don't know. It didn't do well. Oh. It didn't. Did it tear out a bunch? I can't really see that. No, it just put little. Uh -huh. right again. Well, so this, this bears uh, oh. experimentation. All those texturing tools, you can do different things by holding them different and rotating them yeah. different and different speed and all yeah. so so you got to just put a bunch of little scrap pieces on your mandrel yeah. and try some stuff what, try some stuff well i turned it around backwards and it unscrewed and fell all over the floor so i have to pick that up in a minute oh, yeah don't turn it backwards yeah <laughs> all right so we're going to do it do it again i'm going to actually put the so because it's kind of kind of see it just kind of gnarled it up there a little bit. I'm gonna might have to cut this one at a on both sides to get rid of that. And uh, suggestion by Byron, uh, perhaps using the texturing tools at high speed. Um, there's just, there's no bearing. Well, it's a plain bearing. A brass bushing is a plain bearing. There's no ball bearing on the Sorby micro texture tool. Yeah, and, and I wonder too, we're getting off the track here, but with those texture tools like that Sorby spiral, mini spiral, yeah. I believe what speed you go changes the pattern. And I don't think you yeah. usually use it with real high speed. Right, right, right. And as Kieran is suggesting, there's a learning curve. Well, so um, that's kind of the way yeah. everything is. And I Paul's to... recommending 750 RPM. Okay, so that was my suspicion was that you don't want to go 2200 RPM with the texturing tool. So you don't have to do some experimenting to find out whether 750 whether... RPM on the offset turning is a good or not good idea. Right, but, right. Yeah, we'll but, play you know, you can do things on this jig where you don't turn air. Yes, yep. You can put it on there and make a circle within like that. I'm going to find it again because I really like that. Uh, that box. So I just I moved it over and put it into the number two position just because I wanted to kind of show you. So that's, you know, a little eye shape. 
And so I put it in the number two and we'll go and across you're gonna get here. another line across there. The, yeah. the box is in there in the gallery page with the three circles and they're offset, but they don't all overlap the edge of the box. So just, you know, lots of things you can do and it's not all going to be interrupted cuts is what I'm saying. Yep. yep. And chatter tool. Well, I don't know if that would uh, work or not. Um, anyway, experiment guys. And yeah. please let me know. Yeah. Knurling tool, yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, Robin. Robin just brought in just brought in this. So okay. Oh, uh let me you want to switch to the overhead. So we yeah. 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 So here's a little beaded box I did. And so I did the the lid on with the jig. And I just kicked it off center and put beads all the way around it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just one setup. Just one setup. I just Multiple moved beads. It. Some of those beads are all the way on the lid and some of them come off the edge. Yep. Uh, and Byron's got a suggestion here, uh, 350 to 450 for the Sorby micro texturing tool. And here's the really genius suggestion. Decorate the backside of the pendants because when somebody's wearing it, it's going to flip over. Yes, absolutely. Great so, idea. Yeah. yeah. So a um, you just you can decorate it, finish it, put it on. You put them on both ways. So just mm -hmm. on the back side, make sure when you. So before you do your front, make sure it's flat. Put it on there. Finish your back side. Just make sure oh. it's it's cupped out just a little bit, so that okay. you can get. And that's what's nice about the buttons too. You can turn it down to the two inch, and you can basically line it right back up when you flip right. it around to do the front. So yeah, right. definitely finish the back side of it um, and then flip around. I was, you know, I was just doing it for that, so it didn't really matter. But yeah. So hey, there. so here it is a few minutes before the top of the hour. We'll go back to Carl in a minute, but we're gonna do a drawing now. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've got hashtag pizza night to enter the drawing. Got 125 people in it already. And uh, we'll give you, I'm just giving you a couple of seconds here. Get your entry in there. You know, do it like John did here. Hashtag pizza night, no spaces, no capitalized. And we're going to do a drawing here. And um, okay, when I click draw, we're going to have a winner. Are Robin, we ready? Robin didn't enter, did she? I don't know. <laughs> but um, if Carl wins or I win, we draw again. Okay, who's it going to be? Good luck, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Okay, okay. Who's our winner? Rick O'Ryan. Congratulations, Rick. Hey, Rick. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I, I think one of us knows who you are. So if whether you're here or not, you're going to get a package in the mail. And um. You know, Carl, I'm thinking we need to give away two of these. Okay. Let's I'm paying. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to draw again here. We're going to have another winner. We've got Rick O'Ryan for the first one and John Daling oh. for the second winner. Congratulations, Rick and John. This is great stuff. I just, I love it. I love being able to give stuff away, and and I'm really hoping that you you win something like this, and it inspires you to try some new stuff. So you know that's that's what I'm always about. Hey, Rick yeah. is here! Yay! One of us knows who you are. Well, I think I know who you are too. And, All right. Yeah. Cool. Very uh, good. Very awesome. good. Very cool. Well, thank you all for for entering and. This is great stuff, and we're kind of close to our end time. But Carl, do you have a little more you want to do, or would you like to show us what you've done? Yeah, yeah. Let me switch camera. Let me give back you on. the. Uh, so, there we go. I just went ahead and. In I, I want to put you big screen here if I can figure out how to do it. Is that it? Yes, there we are. Well, now I can't get it out. <laughs> but there it is. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, and, and you fitted that into the lid of a box is what you've done here. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you know, yeah. normally what you want to do too, just one quick tip, like go ahead and sand it all the way up to, you know, 400, 600, wherever, whatever you go to sand it before you make those off center cuts. And Good idea. Then that way you don't want to be sanding afterwards. It'll, it'll round over your crisp lines. Yep. 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 So just, yeah, just sand and sand it, then cut your lines in, then put your finish on. But yeah, it's, as far as, uh, you know, design options go on it, it's using the indexing plate for the, for the pendants. You have all of those 10 holes on the back and then you have 26 different holes on the front to spin this thing around to create some really neat uh, patterns on it. It really, yeah. it's just kind of endless what, you know, what you can come up with. But I think it's for doing little inlay stuff like this, um, it, it's a, another great way to use it. I think it was designed for the pendants and bottle stoppers, but it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of other little stuff like that that you can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this was really great, Carl. I'm inspired. I, I like making boxes more than pendants, but yeah. all of these techniques are tr totally translatable into something on the lid of a box. Or, you know, I like to decorate the inside of the lid and the bottom right. of a box. So, yep. uh, yeah, wow. you could even do an inlay on the bottom of the box. Yeah. You could. You could. Yep. Yep. Or a design on the bottom of your box on a, using the mandrel as a jam chuck yeah yes absolutely yeah. yep wow well this is really right. exciting stuff and carl thank you so so much for it, carl didn't get paid for this he came and and donated his time to show oh. me and all of you how to use some neat stuff and um he's got oh. youtubes and he's got uh, resources on his website. You want to tell us again about the about the blue teal links and all that? Yeah, yeah. So if if you're thinking about getting a jig or if you already have one, on when you go to the joiner jig and click on it, it's about halfway down, right above the video that's on there. Those are clickable links, and it's full instructions on that. everything from how to set it up to designing whatever pattern you want. So it's, it's, uh, we send a little card with every jig too that, that tells you that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's right there on the, on the website and you can. We're going it, down. Right there. Okay. Is this it? Detailed guide. Yep. There's yep. a jig intro and pattern design and pendants and the pendant jig pattern tool. Yeah. And then of course he's got some videos. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so there you are. And. And the link to this page, I'm going to copy and paste here in the comments. So you can go over there and find those resources. Those guys are really good with support resources. And check out Carl's YouTube channel, too. I'm going to throw it up here. It's not a clickable link, but. Go to YouTube.com and type in Carl Jacobson. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah, it, then. See, it's easy to figure this stuff out, right? right? I know. I know, Carl. All I got to do is go to YouTube.com and type it in the search bar, and I'll find him. <laughs> yeah, eventually. <laughs> yeah, we'll, eventually. We'll pop up. Yeah. But, yeah, that's a little hard. Link's a little hard to remember. Uh, yeah, 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 that's the yeah. thing is if I could make it clickable, well, that's not so easy here, but right. uh, anyway, yeah. well, uh, we're, we're going to wind things down and uh, I want to say a big thank you to Carl well, thank and a you. big thank you to all of you guys who came to watch and to, to interact and participate. This was really fun. And um uh, I had yeah. a great time and thank you so much, Cindy, for having me on. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And if you have will... have any questions, if anybody has any questions about the jig or anything else, uh, our email and my phone number is on every page of the website. So give me a holler. Yep. Right. So you can always get a hold of Carl and Robin and get more information and if you have trouble getting a hold of carl uh contact me and i will round him up yep. and get your questions answered so yep. 
Absolutely. Very good. All right. We'll get the prizes mailed out. Very good. Congratulations to the winners and yep. congratulations to everyone who's going to try this like, like me. I've got one on order. So uh, exciting stuff. Yeah, It's a lot of fun. You're going to have a great time with it. Come up with some cool stuff. Yeah. And show us when yeah. you come up with something. Yeah. 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 Well, good night, well, everyone. Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon. Whatever it is, wherever you are in the world, we will see you on the next one. Thank you all for being here. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye.